Our darkness is never darkness in your sight. The deepest night is clear as the daylight. Our darkness is never Pope Benedict wrote The Way of the Cross is a chance to experience inner transformation and compassion, that it inspires us to follow Jesus. In fact, we must follow Jesus, for the way of the cross is not only Jesus' way, but also our own. We each walk alongside him as we carry the crosses present in our own lives. It's not a comfortable prayer, but by walking with Jesus, we become more willing to love to be patient, and to sacrifice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may our contemplation of these sacred stations open our hearts to the graces poured forth on the world from the cross. Bless us, O Lord, that we might be open to receive your graces. Bless our minds that we might meditate on these timeless mysteries. Bless our hearts, that we might hear your voice. Bless our lips, that we might speak your praise. Bless our hearts, that we might know your love. Bestow on us, O Lord, understanding to know you, diligence to seek you, and wisdom to find you. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So he released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Imagine yourself in the crowd. Jesus is silent at the front. You hear the cry for crucifixion. Even your own voice joins the chants. Standing bloodied and broken, the Lord refuses to defend himself. Pilate gives in to the crowd, and the decision has been made. The road to Calvary awaits Jesus. We often feel stuck in situations that are out of our control. It is comforting to know that Jesus can relate to us. Standing before Pilate, he probably felt the same way. Dear Jesus, you surrendered your power so that we might be saved. When we feel powerless and unfairly treated, we can come to you knowing that you will understand. Help us to remember that you will always stand up for us, amen. The second station, Jesus carries the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Jesus is now thrust in the busy streets, bystanders watching him walk to his death. The splinter cross beam digs into his shoulder. The wood is stained with his precious blood. Jesus embraces more than the physical pain in this moment. With each step forward, Christ takes on our sin. 
God knows the most intimate fears and struggles of your own life, the crosses you carry each day. Go to Jesus with your struggles and invite him into it. Pray to him you are not journeying alone. Be with us, Jesus, and help us not to forget the load that you carried for us. Help us faithfully to carry each other's crosses. Amen. The Third Station, Jesus Falls. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The merciless scourging from the Roman soldiers had left him weakened. The wounds on his back add to his struggle to bear the cross. Jesus' cross contains the sins of all humankind. A burden so heavy, even the Son of God falls under his weight. As he falls, Jesus hears the jeers and the slander of the crowd. Every time we act selfishly or act to hurt each other, we are adding to the weight of the cross, and yet Jesus, he takes it willingly to free us from the burden. Lord Jesus, you take us up to the cross to save us from our sins and ease our pain. Give us the grace to rise when we fall and help us to turn our hearts to you and to be strengthened to help others who have fallen. Amen. The Fourth Station, Jesus Meets His Mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Imagine yourself there, in the crowd, quietly, desperately trying to make your way through to see the child you raised. Finally, you see him. He is bruised, battered, bloodied, and exhausted. The crowd is yelling, jeering at him, and insulting him. Your eyes meet and you feel each of his wounds. You stand there, staring at, at each other in silence. The deep love of Mary for her only son reveals God's love for us. Mary's gentleness brings Jesus temporary relief, but could not save him as he has not yet saved us. Mary, our mother, open our hearts so that we may receive the grace your son shares with us. Help us to be like you, imitating the love you showed to your son. Amen. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. A simple passerby, Simon doesn't volunteer for this. Maybe he would rather not get involved, but he's not given a choice. Let us consider Jesus looking deep into the eyes of Simon. Simon's arms met the arms of Jesus wrapped around the cross. Simon can feel the exhaustion of our Lord. Does Simon understand that the cross he is now carrying plays a part in his own salvation? Although Simon helps Jesus with his physical cross, there's only one person who can carry the weight of our sin, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you know how it feels to give and receive help. Help us to follow Simon's example and give us hearts of love to pick up and carry the crosses of others. Amen. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. He had no former majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Sweat drips into our Savior's swollen eyes as he sees a figure moving slowly toward him. Veronica tenderly wipes away the blood from Jesus' face. His eyes shine bright beneath the removed blood. She sees the face of God. No gesture of love, no act of charity, 
however small, is forgotten in the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus, you don't ask us to solve the problems of the world on our own. You ask us to love one another. The rest will follow. Teach us to see your face and not to turn away from pain and suffering. Amen. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. The Passover crowds of Jerusalem press against Jesus as he passes through the narrow streets of Jerusalem. Every bump or collision with the crowd sends shockwaves through his wavering body. It becomes too much and he falls again. Imagine Jesus lying face down on the ground under the weight of the cross, tearing into the flesh of his back. How easy it would be to give up, but he did not. He presses on for he knows his walk is not yet done. Jesus knew well our human frailty. In the garden of Gethsemane, he bled and he cried. And now, physically defeated, he falls again. Each of us will also fall. Look to our Lord, and he will give you grace to stand again and move forward. Dear Jesus, even though you fell along your journey, you never gave up. Please give us the strength to endure our hardest days. Help us to remember that you will always help us up when we fall. Amen. The Eighth Station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus continues his journey to the cross. His friends have deserted him. His body is failing him. His dignity is diminishing. Along the way, Jesus meets a group of women. They have not abandoned him. Their crying catches our Lord's attention. Despite his own pain and agony, Jesus stops to console these women. Selfless to the end, he gives them his comfort. Suffering does not mean that God does not love you. Remember that nothing, even torture, could stop Jesus from offering his comfort. As St. Augustine said, God has one son on earth without sin, but never one without suffering. Dear Lord, Fill our hearts with the same compassion as the women of Jerusalem. Help us to be faithful and to follow you, even when we feel alone. You will never abandon us. Please give us the courage to do the same for you. Amen. The Ninth Station. Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Our Lord's knees are bloodied from the previous falls. His legs are almost lifeless. As he falls this third time, Jesus feels the pain we feel each time that we are beaten down, mocked, rejected, and abandoned. Again, he rises to complete his mission. His love for us is relentless. Everyone wants to quit at different points throughout his or her life. Maybe you've tried and tried, but nothing has changed. We often think that it would be easier just to give up, but Jesus falling multiple times shows us that God's grace helps us to get back up time and again. Lord Jesus, you gave us the ultimate sacrifice for us. Help us to trust that no matter how many times we fall, you are there to pick us back up. Amen. The Tenth Station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. 
The walk has ended, but the mockery has not. Jesus is utterly humili humiliated as he is stripped naked before mocking onlookers. Exposed for all to see, his wounds are clearly visible as are the fruits of our sins. In all of this, he is praying for those persecuting him and thinks of you and I, his sinful people whom he loves enough to undergo this horrific suffering and death. When we think of Jesus, Jesus' public humiliation, we think of the times when we have felt embarrassed and mortified. Jesus was stripped of his dignity so that all of those who are treated without dignity know that God suffers in solidarity with him. Dear Jesus, help us to remember that you understand when we feel embarrassed. Give us the courage to stand up for the dignity of every person. Amen. The Eleventh Station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The time has come. Shouts of pain echo as the hammer strikes the nail. As the cross is lifted high for all to see, his body buckles under the stress. As he speaks words of love, compassion, and forgiveness, we see he is not a criminal, nor even a mere teacher or prophet. He is God, and he is dying on the cross for you and for me. Christ could have gone off that cross, but he chose not to. He chose to save you instead of himself. A God crucified is a God you can trust. He didn't choose the easy way out. We know that we can trust him when we are in pain. Dear Jesus, remove from our lives the sins that pound the nails into our wrists and feet, the same sins which nail us to the crosses in our own life. Lord, please help comfort all of those who are in pain today. Amen. The Twelfth Station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. Skies have grown dark, each breath for our Lord is a struggle as he hangs on the cross. Even Christ himself, in his final words, cries out to his Father in despair. He now hangs lifeless and disfigured. No more words, no more miracles. But the promise of Christ does not end at the cross. Death will not have the last word. It's easy to think about Jesus' love, God's love, in a general way. But think about it on a personal level. Jesus died to pay the price of your sins and mine. If you and I had been the only people on earth, Jesus still would have accepted the death on the cross just for us. Dear Jesus, you accepted death out of love for us. You went through all of this for our salvation. Help us to make sacrifices in our own lives to show our love for you and to bring your love into this world. Amen. The 13th station. Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. The sun begins to set and only a few people remain at the scene. Jesus' body is removed from the bloody cross. When Jesus was an infant, Mary would have held him close and rocked him to sleep. Now she holds her son again. The empty cross seems like a sign of defeat, 
But Mary held on to her son when all seemed lost. We too must cling to Jesus when things seem hopeless. Mother Mary, we are so tempted to give up on Jesus when things begin to look bleak. Pray for us as we learn to imitate you, who trusted in his love even during the darkest hours. Amen. The 14th station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. All is now quiet. The body of Christ has been laid in the cold, dark tomb. The stone is moved over the entrance. Darkness fills the tomb, our hearts, and the world. When Jesus was buried, it was not only the sadness of losing a friend, it was the feeling, feeling that hope, love, and goodness had been defeated, that God himself had been defeated. Though faith is shaken, our hope remains steadfast. The tomb holds him for now, but we know that death will not. Jesus, help us to live in hope. Replace our pain with your consolation. Help us to see past the tomb of the darkness of our lives toward the hope of your resurrection. Amen. The journey to the cross can change your life. When you are struggling, lean on Jesus. Find strength and courage in his life and in his cross. Open your heart to the fire of Jesus' love. His love will change your life when you let it. In closing, we will recite a prayer of St. Thomas Aquinas. O merciful God, grant that I may ever perfectly do your will in all things. Let it be my ambition to work only for your honor and glory. May all passing things be as nothing in my eyes, and may all that is yours be dear to me, and you, my God, dear above them all. Give me, O God, an ever watchful heart, which nothing can ever lure away from you. Amen.